Hello, hello, hello. Uh, so Wednesdays is going to be we go over a team or two, maybe three, depending on how close we get to the season with this series. And uh, we're just going to be going over each position where we think they should go or just their viability to play and put up points this year. And uh, we're going to start with the top of whoever ESPN at the top of the list. I'm pretty sure I saw Buffalo Bills. So it'll probably be the title of this video. So I'm only doing one because uh, that bunny rabbit just went crazy. Just stared me in the eyes. Just sprinted off. All right. He's not going to kill me. Dang, he's fast. Um, shoot. Where was I? Oh, okay. So, yeah, today we're just going to go over the Bills. And uh, we're just going to talk about you know, their, their team comp and what we should kind of expect or what I think, you know, I expect. There's a little bit of difference that they had last year this year. They've added some players. They took away some players. But pretty much we're just going to talk about what the viability is. Each is kind of in, in best ball. Tiny. I want it big. All right, here we go. So we're rocking with Josh Allen, obviously QB one. Wanna like uh, what? I've seen him go as high as two, two one. I've seen him a lot of times in best ball. Holy frick, dude! You good? The moment I look away, he freaks out. Anywho, okay. So this is according to Buffalo Bills on ESPN. So obviously no verified real depth chart. You'll see the real depth charts week one. So I'll take this with a grain of salt. So QB1 in, in best ball. I mean, it'd be weird to see anybody else get drafted ahead of him. He's miles ahead of, in my eyes, of uh, Pat Mahomes. I think my boy Justin Herbert's pushing on him, but just uh, Josh still, still, still leader of the pack, uh, and should clearly as as long as they're running this similar offense. Which Ken Dorsey, my man, Ken Dorsey, is the offensive coordinator now. He, he was there when Cam Newton had his MVP season, so I wouldn't even be surprised if Josh Allen was the MVP this year. I'd like to have more shares of him, but it's pretty tough to get him in general. Um, they have Devin Singletary as their lead back, which I think is still going to be the case, I think, right off the get-go. I still like Devin Singletary. Um, I think he, he's proven himself that he can handle the workload. But I think it's also nice that they brought in James Cook, who can release some of the pressure so he doesn't have to be there like the entire game, and that way he could potentially get stronger as the game goes on. So I think he's a great value pick where I'm beginning him like the 100. Like I think it's a ninth, 10th round. I just got him. Um, Stephon Diggs. Oh, we'll talk about James Cook. James Cook, uh, unless something happens – to Devin Singletary, I think it's going to be a, a split community, uh, a split backfield at the at the sorry, sounds like someone fell out of the bed. Just waiting for a cry. Uh, at the worst, it would uh, be a split backfield unless unless something happened to yeah, something happened to Devin Singletary. Um. That brings Zach Moss and Duke Johnson. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Duke Johnson got cut. I don't think they were expecting to have James Cook on this team. And uh, I think they brought in Duke for his role. Now, Zach Moss is there. And I just think they gave up on Zach, which happens in the NFL. And so I think Devin Singletary is going to have the workload right off the rip. And then eventually, Kate, uh, James Cook will be be taking some of the carry. He's like later on in the season, 
and they'll be splitting. Unless unless one of them gets hurt, I think the other will take the majority. And like, I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if Devin gets hurt. They bring in Zach to do most of the like heavy lifting, and and then bring James for the explosive plays, the one off plays. Because I mean, why not? I mean, he's fast, and the, he's not Darren Sproles, but he's very he's good with the ball in his hands. So, all right, well, that's really it. talk about the Bills. Let's talk about these wide receivers. So we have Stephon Diggs, Gabriel Davis, Jamison Crowder. Man, oh man. Stephon Diggs, stud, one oh, you know, first, second round. It's tough to put him there because now with the bevity of options that, that the Bills have, it'll be tough to get to him. As much, but I think he's such a game breaker. I mean, he was like, I, as soon as he came out of college, I, I personally compared him to Antonio, Antonio Brown, just the way he played. I don't know his speed, his route running, his catching. They're pretty much on par with one another, and I pretty that was pretty much shown two years ago. I mean, last year he still had a good year, but I feel like he didn't have the great year. And I feel like having Gabriel Davis, I don't know if that's going to split his like his uh his target share, but I feel like that's only going to help Stephon Diggs. Maybe even take some coverage off of Stephon Diggs off of him. So maybe he'll make some more big time plays like he did a couple years ago instead of just the red zone plays. Um they brought in Jameson Crowder. He's never had a good quarterback, so I mean, unless but he, had, he he's very talented coming out of Duke, and I I loved him, you know, at, at, and Redskins. Well, yeah, they were the Redskins back then, and but he just hasn't really proven. Like he had good games with the Jets. He had some he, he's had some good games here and there. But I don't know. Is Khalil Shakur my guy? Like I believe in Khalil Shakur and Isaiah McKenzie. One, I believe in McKenzie because he's been a part of the team already. I don't see how he's like second string behind Stephon Diggs, but they know more than I do. So, <laughs> and they present different options. Um, he's just like a a. He's like the Cole Beasley type where he's just going to get open, you know, and catch the ball and then maybe break a tackle every once in a while. Khalil Shakur, I feel like can do that better. I wouldn't be surprised if midway through the season he gets ahead of Jameson Crowder and the four set is Stephon, Davis, McKenzie, and Shakur, and Crowder sitting on the outside waiting for an injury. And I always love Jake Kumaro, but I don't think – I think he's just a practice squad guy at this point. Uh, or an injury, you know, kind of guy. All right, we're looking at the tight ends. Dawson Knox, O.J. Howard, Tommy Sweeney, Quentin Morris. We're not going to talk about the bottom two. Though Sweeney, I think, had one decent game. We're, we're pretty much just going to focus on Dawson Knox and O.J. Howard. Everything coming out of college for O.J. Howard showed that he should be an elite tight end. Except he hasn't at all. Now, I do think that this season is going to be his most productive season. And I do think that's going to hurt Dawson Knox a little bit. I don't think it's going to hurt him that much, though. I feel like... I feel like that Josh Allen has his three favorite receivers on this team. And they were there last year. Diggs, Davis, and Knox. I think those will be his most targeted players. But I think Howard could get some looks here and there. Just like I think it was Sweeney. If it wasn't Sweeney, it was another tight end that played for them either last year or the year before where they got like two or three touchdowns right off the rip. And it was like kind of eye eye opening for, for Knox. But I think Knox is going to have probably 10 touchdowns. Six, you know, 60 to 70 receptions and 
eight hundred yards. You know what I mean? And then the other two are gonna have a thousand. I, I mean, I I think this is gonna be a five thousand yard passing season by Josh Allen and Stephon and Stephon and Gabriel are gonna have like twelve hundred a piece. Knox will have eight hundred. Crowder four hundred. You know, like and one of these other guys is gonna pop off. <sighs> It's going to be a great season. I guess the game. I wouldn't be surprised if Davis and Diggs both had 1,500. That'd be insane, but it's, 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 a, it's a likely, you know, scenario because with the, uh, I mean, two div- – hold on, my cat's crying. Okay. Hey, per monster. Um, where was I? Their O line looks solid. Saffold, Mitch Morse. I know they're not offensive fantasy players, but so they're not like too worried about offensive line getting any worse this year. I know. We're going to bed soon. I think Josh Allen, I think a safe bet this year is to bet Josh Allen for MVP and the Bills to win the Super Bowl, to be honest. I mean, that's what I would bet personally. It all depends on uh, how much they want to blow people out. Oh, what I was going with, I don't remember. Um, they, uh, they're going to be in some shootouts this year. I think that the Jets offensively got way better. I think that the Dolphins got way more explosive. And the Patriots will be the Patriots. I mean, we don't have to worry about them as much. And and they play some pretty good teams. So I think they play the Steelers and whatnot. So hopefully it's not week 17. Um, but I, I feel like the Bills just want to just, just destroy everybody next year and are going to put 50 up points and they're not going to stop until they do every week. They're going to be like – what Oklahoma used to do to everybody in the Big 12 back in the day. Just blow everybody out. I know. You love me. Uh, their defense is good. I mean, obviously they added um, Von Miller. And they got Kair Elam. They got Poyer, High, Tredavious White. Like, I don't know how anybody's going to pass on them. And then... At Oliver, defensive tackle. Some people compared him before his senior year to Aaron Donald. Matt Milano has shown that he's a stud. Jack Lawson's always been decent. Greg Rousseau out of Miami. They got drafted, I think, first round last year. Like their their defense is it's very solid. So. I wouldn't be surprised if they went 13 and four, 14 and three. But we'll see. Uh, not much else to say about the much else to say about the Bills. Um should be a good season for the Bills, though. So I, I would definitely try to get at least one player every every time you did a draft, try to get one of the uh the Bills. You don't have to get the starters. I mean, you can sneak in last round, get your great cure. You you get OJ Howard in the last round. I mean, if, if the other people haven't gone, obviously Diggs, Davis, Knox, they all will all be gone by then. But uh, I mean, wouldn't it be I wouldn't be opposed to grabbing McKenzie or Shakir or Howard or Cook. You know, in those later rounds, you're pretty much at the draft ADP or above on every other player except for Devin Singletary. He's the only player that keeps falling that I keep grabbing because I just want a piece. I mean, that's just how I play it. I just want a piece of a high potent offense. And if I can't get the full stack, like just give me a little bit of it. So when they have explosive weeks and it's his turn, because they're all going to have their turn. Except, you know, when certain players are going to just have more of them, like the Vegas will probably have better, like more high potent offense, like, Big weeks, but 
what won me a million it was like a decent week by Devin Singletary. And you know, I didn't have Diggs or Diggs or uh, Diggs or Davis on that team because it was Singletary that week. You just gotta get lucky week 17. Tomorrow the schedule comes out, so we're gonna see how tough the schedule is, but I don't think the, the Bills have anything to worry about. All right. Well, it's been fun. It's been real. It's been real fun, y'all. Later. See ya.